Hey guys and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Andy Hutchinson and I'm a former technology and gadget journalist with over 30 years experience in magazines, newspapers and TV. I've also been a landscape photographer for most of my life and I make all kinds of videos for photography enthusiasts of all skill levels simply sharing the love for this amazing hobby. And in this video, I wanted to talk about the subject of data backups for photographers. Eight years ago, a hard drive containing one of my photo archives died and took with it about four years worth of photos. I had a backup in place for the drive, a simple synchronization from one drive to another, but I hadn't bothered checking it regularly and it turned out that there were some large gaps missing. I managed to get some high resolution JPEGs back from my Flickr account, but I still lost years of photographs. This only has to happen to you once before you instantly become the world's biggest advocate for comprehensive backup solutions. So when another hard drive died on me recently, and since I was able to safely restore all of my photos, I thought I'd explain my backup system and hopefully let my disasters serve as a warning for all photographers to protect their hard work. The kind of backups you put in place for your photographs will of course depend upon how many photographs you have. For instance, if you shoot film and scan your photos, you might have as few as several hundred. But if you're a digital photographer who's been in the game for as long as I have, then there will be hundreds of thousands. At its most basic level, a backup might simply be your collection of smartphone photographs stored in the Apple Cloud Drive or Google Drive. But even with this simple setup, you need to be careful. I once deleted several years worth of photos off my iPhone, knowing that they were stored locally in the photos app but of course as soon as the phone and the computer synchronized the images were deleted off my computer and i would have lost them all but for a time machine backup my point is that you should never assume that your photographs are safe and sound indifference to the fate of your photos might lead to the loss of some of your most precious memories or your favorite shots but let's say that you have more than a smartphone's worth of photos you have thousands of them. If that's the case, and if those photos are important to you, then you need to use the 3 2 1 rule. This rule will ensure your photographs are protected for all but a world ending apocalypse. And you've probably got bigger problems on your plate than photo backups if that happens. According to the 3 2 1 rule, you should have three copies of your data on two different media types with one copy stored off site. This protects against file corruption, hardware failure, and theft or damage. My 321 backups look like this. I have a main photo drive, which I, in a stunning flourish of originality, named Photos. On this drive is the last five years of my photos, all nicely indexed in Adobe Lightroom. In the corner of my office, plugged by ethernet directly into the office switch, I have a Synology NAS. This is a network attached storage drive, basically four big drives in one enclosure acting as a single unit. We use NAS drives for backup because they can potentially store massive amounts of data, but also because they have built-in redundancy to protect against inevitable hard drive failure. Depending upon how you set up your NAS, a drive or even two drives within it can fail completely and all you have to do is replace the dead drives and the NAS will rebuild your archive with no intervention required from you. It's pretty neat. So I have all of my photos on those drives you can see over my shoulder synchronizing over the Ethernet network here which means my photos are on two different media types. The everyday photos drive on my desk and the NAS in the corner of the office. That brings us around to the final piece of the 321 backup, offsite. There are plenty of ways to ensure you have offsite backups, the easiest of which is storing your photos in the cloud. But you could 
If you wanted, simply create a copy of your photo archive, put it on another hard drive, and then simply store that drive somewhere other than your home or office. There are security implications to this, of course. Someone could nick the drive from that other location, for instance, but nevertheless, it's a cheap and effective option. There are plenty of companies offering cloud-based backup, but the only option I recommend is Backblaze. I've been using Backblaze for years to store my entire 22 terabyte photo archive online. Yep, you heard me right, 22 terabytes. And all it costs me is 99 bucks a year. Backblaze do not place a cap on the amount of data you can store in your account. I guarantee you will not find a cheaper and more reliable cloud-based backup service for the kind of archive sizes that photographers routinely deal with. The backups work by incrementally storing your data using a small utility that monitors your drives. Every time a new file appears or a file is modified, it gets uploaded to the cloud. If you have a slow internet connection that gets maxed out and you'd like to be able to watch the crown in peace, then you get to set it to upload during specific hours of the night. Depending on how much data you have and how fast your internet is, it could take weeks or even months to fully upload for the first time, but subsequent updates are quick and efficient. Should disaster happen and both your photo drive and your NAS drive get damaged or destroyed, then you can log into your Backblaze account and download your data. If we're talking lots of data and my main photo drive over there alone is eight terabytes, then you can use the hard drive postage option to get your photo data back. For 189 bucks, Backblaze will put the data on a drive, max size eight terabytes, and mail it back to you. You can either keep that drive or send it back and get a full refund. If that's not an awesome service, I don't know what is. When you're setting up your backups, remember you need to also back up everything associated with your photos, such as the catalogs created by the app you use to manage your photos. I use Adobe Lightroom Classic, and I back up my Lightroom catalogs alongside my photos because it beats the shit out of remaking the raw edits of hundreds of thousands of shots. I also back up my personal presets, my LUTs, and my plugins so that should I have to rebuild my Lightroom catalog, I have everything I need. So that covers your backups for your home or office, but what if you're traveling and don't have access to your main photo drive or indeed reliable internet access? If you value the photographs you take when you're away from home, whether it's on holiday or for work, then you 100% have to copy your photos off those SD cards onto something else on a regular basis. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, SD cards are the least reliable storage medium there is. They are not designed to be forever storage. Secondly, your camera might get stolen or you might drop it in the old Trevi fountain. And while I've put an SD card through a hot cycle in the washing machine and it still worked, you don't want to risk it. So firstly, consider using lower capacity SD cards. This will force you to rotate the cards out more often, thereby spreading the load across a larger number of media. If one 16 gig card shits itself, it's not gonna be as devastating as for a 256 gig. Lower capacity cards also tend to be more reliable. However, what is more important is to get the photos off the SD card. Wedding photographers do this at multiple points during a shoot to ensure they don't lose any of those precious shots. And while I don't think we have to be that obsessive, you should certainly consider backing them up once a day, say, back at the hotel, Airbnb, or yurt. The Western Digital My Passport Wireless Pro is a great option because you can plug your SD card straight into it and have it back up your photos. You can also connect to that drive via Wi-Fi on your phone or laptop and transfer, edit and upload. My favorite backup solution for when I'm away from home is a small SSD that attaches via USB-C to my MacBook Pro. Don't buy an expensive pre-made option. Instead, get an M2 NVMe SSD enclosure and pair it with the SSD of your choice. I've got several of the Areco 10 gigabytes SSD enclosures and find them to be excellent. They're only 20 bucks a pop. In terms of the SSD you stick in the enclosure, 
Just buy one with the capacity and meet your needs. My personal favourites are the Samsung 970 Evo Plus range. They're built for gaming and are fast and reliable. The 2TB version costs about 200 bucks. If you really want to take all of the hassle out of backing up your photos, then use a batch utility to automatically transfer from SD card to backup whenever you plug it into your laptop. I use the awesome Hazel utility on my Mac. If you want to do more than transfer, then the Epic Retro Batch 2 app can perform a complicated workflow process including color adjustments and watermarks. On Windows, the Batch Photo app is your go-to. You can see my review for it up here. Alternatively, check out the XN Convert for Windows, which is freeware. I'll put the links to all this, incidentally, in the description down below, should you wish to check them out. And that'll do it for this video, guys. I do implore you to please put some kind of backup system in place. Consider how you'd feel if you lost all your photos. If you got value from this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more photo, video and drone related content from yours truly. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.